So in this video segment, I want to talk about what to expect as a survivor, an individual that has experienced traumatic events and feels like the experience from that has had an impact on them. When we talk about what to expect, what I really want to focus on is what should you expect from others? We can always talk about what to expect from ourselves, but when you reach out for assistance and you reach out for help and you're turning to organizations, professions, or even individual professionals, there are some expectations that's okay for you to have, but I think in order for you to have the expectations, you have to know what to look for. So I have eight things that I specifically want to talk about that you can expect as a survivor. All of these are specific to if you're accessing assistance for your needs. First, I want to talk about having an expectation that the organization or the professional has a commitment to treating yourself and presenting the organization in a trauma-informed care manner. A previous video specifically talks about trauma-informed care, but what it really comes down to is that when you walk into that organization or you meet with that professional, that they are working with you, not for you, that they're partnering with you, not against you, and most importantly, that they are there for you. Second, the environment that they provide for you should be safe. And when we talk about safety, what I really mean is that when you walk into their agency, when you walk into their reception area, when you walk into their office, or wherever it is that you are meeting, do you yourself physically feel safe? Do they allow you to identify who and who cannot be a part of your processes and your services? Do they talk with you about things like confidentiality and what can and cannot be shared? As well as the environment itself, when you walk in, are you greeted? Do you feel comfortable with the greeting that you, you're provided? What about your senses? Are they on fire or are they calm? And when we talk about senses, we're even talking about things like, what do you smell? What do you hear? What do you feel? Even all the way down to what do you taste in that environment? I know that may seem really odd, but it's absolutely amazing what the brain will respond to in the right moments. And sometimes the biggest triggers to our traumatic components in our bodies and in our brains are actually based on the senses. Something that you hear, something that you smell, or even something that you taste. So when we talk about safety and we talk about working with others and what to expect, the important piece that you can do as an individual, you can't change the environment. That is theirs and they are responsible for maintaining that environment. But ultimately, you can use your voice. Talk about the things that you noticed when you walked in. Talk about that you don't feel safe or you notice stress and talk with that provider about how to address that in that moment. You can expect in a trauma-informed care environment that they will respond to that. And that is their obligation as well as yours. Third, anyone that you work with, and this is not even a trauma-specific component, but even more important as a survivor, the individuals that you surround yourself with should have a strength-based perspective. Ultimately, every single human being in this world has strengths. There are times that we lose sight of those as individuals and even as professionals. If you're noticing that your interactions seem to be very focused on the not so great, the negative, the stress, all of those components, and we don't seem to hear a lot of positives or strengths or the things I'm doing well, it's up to you to advocate for what you need as a survivor and say, are we ever gonna talk about the positive? Because it's important. If both you yourself and or the person you're working with loses sight of those strengths, our interactions completely change. And usually that change is not always for the better. Fourth, I wanna talk about an awareness of relationships. When we think about what you can expect as a survivor from others, part of it falls on you as a survivor themselves. Relationships are at the core of everything that we do. In order to build trust, to feel safe, to be able to be open and honest, to have choice, to be empowered, I have to trust the people that surround me. The question is, 
Do you have those relationships with those individuals around you? And if not, are they working to build those? And more importantly, are you allowing it? We can talk about what survivors can expect from others, but there are pieces that we do have to expect from you as well. Will you allow those relationships to be built so that you can find that way to make progress moving forward? So that's the you component. What about the them? Are they taking the time to build that? Are they taking the time to understand, to listen, to be a part of who you are, which includes everything from your day-to-day -day interactions and routines, all the way down to the things that you value most, your morals, your values, your beliefs, your cultural components, and everything in between. Are they taking those into account when they're providing you a service? That is what you can expect from anyone as a survivor. Fifth, are they working with you to promote wellness? Well, how do we do that? One of the big core components of building wellness within a human being is through what's called regulatory practices. Are they either teaching you? Are they modeling? Are they working with you to build practices that naturally calm mind, body, and brain? You can have internal components that we use for calming. We can have external components that we use for calming. But when they don't work, is somebody helping you build other things? Now, why is that so important? I mean, people talk about coping skills all the time. Why is that so important? The fact of the matter is, is if my brain is not calm, I'm not rational. And if I'm not rational, my decision making, my ability to reason, and my ability to maintain my behavior in an appropriate manner becomes impacted. So when I as a survivor am accessing services, there should be an expectation that we spend time focusing on regulation. How do I calm mind, body, and brain? What does that look like? Sixth, are they taking the right approach? A lot of people talk about things like cultural competence. Um, I don't believe that cultural competency exists. Instead, have you heard the term culturally humble? This is something that you should expect from those around you. What that means is instead of walking into a situation as a professional and saying, I read a book, I know everything I need to know about you, this is what you're going to do. What if they took a culturally humble approach and said, Help me learn, help me understand. Tell me your perspective. What does that look like? How does that play out? What are your beliefs, your values, your morals? Where do those come from? What builds them, what supports them? This is an expectation that you can have that the providers around you are being humble to your story. No individual person can truly 100% understand another person. Are they taking that approach or are they making assumptions and judgments based on their own biases that they hold? And every single human being has them. Are they able to look outside of that scope? Seventh, if you're accessing clinical services, so you are seeing a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, my big question there is, have they approached you in a clinically appropriate manner? Meaning, not only have they gathered signs and symptoms that we often talk about, physical, things that are observable, things other people tell us that we do, but do they ask about history? What's happened? What's happening? What's happening in the future? Do they ask you about nightmares, sleeping patterns, eating patterns, um, startle responses? Do they have you do screenings or testing or checklists? Do they take into account your experiences from zero to now, no matter what age you are? That is an appropriate clinical service. And if I take the time to truly understand who you are as a human being, I'm more likely to create a treatment plan that's gonna be most effective for you as a human being. If you notice that you're working with a clinical professional, and they aren't asking those big questions. They aren't looking at the past. They're not asking about what's happened or what's happening. Ask, why aren't they asking? That you feel this is an important part of your story and why are they only looking at the things that we can observe? If you think about when you go to a regular medical physician's office, what do we talk about? 
We talk about the things that you can see and the things that people notice. My arm hurts, there's a bruise, I can't walk, um, I don't feel well, I'm coughing a lot. Those are the things that are observable and noticeable. But when we go into that physician's office, do we often talk about, hey, this is what happened yesterday, this is what happened a year ago, this is what happened 10 years ago. These are the thoughts that I have, these are the things that I'm experiencing from those thoughts. I've noticed this, I've noticed that. And what you'll find is in most regular medical physician's offices, you don't have those conversations. Your clinical offices should look different. They shouldn't be focused on those basics. They should be expanding them. And if they're not, I want you to question the service. That is your right as a human being. Lastly, I want you to think about how does hope and recovery play a role for you? What do I mean by recovery? Anyone who experiences a difficult event, anyone who has negative experiences as a result of that event, has the capability to be okay. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, it may not even be six months from now, but each and every one of you have the ability to be okay. When you are working with other professionals, agencies, and organizations, do they focus and provide a presence of hope and recovery? Are they looking at how we can begin to move forward without using terms like forgive and forget or move on? The reality is as a survivor, you know as well as I know, we don't just forget what happens. We learn how to manage it, how to put it into those containers and how to move forward. That is recovery. Are the organizations that you're working with supporting that hope and that foundation of recovery? Those are the things that I want you to expect from any service, organization, or professional that you're working with as a survivor.